Hi guys, welcome to another video on Tech with Shakur. Now today in the What is series, we are going to discuss about SSH. In a very short time, I will take you through what is SSH and how it uses encryption to create a secure connection. Now before we get started, if you are worried about the word encryption, you probably use it every single day in your life. The WhatsApp message that you just sent is end to end encrypted. The YouTube URL that you are currently accessing has a teeny tiny small lock button in the left hand side. That is encryption. Now if we are surrounded by encryption and we use it heavily, it will be cool to read about it, right? So let's get started. Now SSH or Secure Shell is a way in which I can write some commands on my machine, send it across and execute them on another machine. So why would I want to do that? Why can't I just go to that machine, execute that command there? Now I will give you three scenarios where this is very useful. The first one, suppose the other machine looks something like this. Now I am not kidding, this is how most of the servers in the world look like. They are not that fancy supercomputers that you picture them to be. They are exactly like this machine, with no display, no keyboards and literally no way to type in some commands. Second, what if the machine doesn't even exist? Yeah, it's a cloud VM. Now how will I type in into something which doesn't even have a physical existence? Third, what if this machine is remotely available? I am sitting in Ghazabad and this machine is present in my office in Bangalore. Or that location is not even accessible. Recently we have seen Microsoft deploying its server deep inside the ocean. Now Bangalore is a place I can fly in if my family allows. That's a different situation. But deep inside the ocean, why would I willingly go to that place for anything, let alone some commands which I don't even care. So the point is, I need a mechanism where I could send these commands over the network, execute them on another machine, get the output and just use that, right? So for that, a protocol called Telnet was invented. Now Telnet breaks down my commands into packets, sends these packets across the network and gets the output. Now Telnet was discovered in 1979. Back then the use was pretty limited to local use. We used to connect to local servers. There was no concept of cloud or remote server. But today, as the technology is growing, I need to connect to a server which is across the globe. So this packet transfer is not just limited to local range. It is traveling thousands and thousands of miles. Now the problem with that is, anyone in the middle with the packet sniffer could basically get the hand on my sensitive information like usernames, password. Now I can't risk my servers. I can't compromise them, right? So Telnet is not providing me a secure connection. That is why I moved to SSH. SSH or Secure Shell uses asymmetric cipher encryption to encrypt my data. Now these are some heavy words, right? Asymmetric, cipher, encryption, what are these? So this brings me to a very important module, encryption. Now encryption in the most layman term means locking my data up and whosoever has the key to that lock can open and read it. Sounds simple, right? But there is a slight complication. Let's see with an example. So this is me. And I want to send some username and password over the internet to a server. These are basically my commands which I want to execute. So this, as I mentioned, I will use some encryption. I would not send it directly as it is. I would use some encryption. By encryption, what I mean is I will convert this username and password into something which is complicated. Complicated or let's say scrambled. This is like if this username is admin or the password is shuttle, I would say send it as it is. I would convert it into some gibberish text. Why I would do that is if anyone is in the middle, this hacker gets a hang of this data as it is, the, this complicated data, he would not understand it. If he used that data, that password and that username would be correct, right? So I will use an algorithm or a function. This could be anything. For the most basic function, I could use reversal. So let's say I am using reversal. So instead of admin, I will be sending the reverse of admin. Now when this reaches on the other side, this, this complicated data, and I have shared across the algorithm. It will use the same algorithm to decrypt it. So I get the decrypted data on the server side. All right. Now if I if I reverse something, if I reverse admin and then I re-reverse the admin, I get admin again. Right? 
simple so based on the same algorithm which i used for encryption i can use it to decrypt right now this algorithm what is known as cipher this is the cipher that we that i was talking about this cipher can be used to this could be any mathematical function or any algorithm for simplicity i have used reversal but it could be any complex algorithm right now this method where i use the same algorithm for encryption and decryption is known as symmetric cipher symmetric cipher because i am using the same algorithm at both sides now there is a problem with this the problem is because i am using the same algorithm i need to share this algorithm also so when i am sharing this algorithm suppose this hacker gets a hand of this algorithm also this cipher so what will happen is he will also be able to decrypt my message now that defeats my purpose of encryption right i was encrypting it so that hacker doesn't know it right but if he has that cipher if he has that key he will be able to basically unlock my data right i don't want that so that is why i use something called asymmetric cipher asymmetric cipher gives me a combination of keys one is a public key and one another one is a private key these keys are basically the ciphers that i was talking about so private key or private cipher is something which i keep it to myself i don't share it across public key is something which i distribute over the network i send it to server i didn't send it to say everybody i send a personal copy to this hacker right by to be right kuch rahe theek hai i have sent it to everyone but the catch here is the public key is only used for encryption you can only lock the data with the public key now if i am sending the public key anyone with the public key can only lock the data so i have two keys here one is public and one is private i have shared across the public key to everyone this guy has my public key even the hacker has my public key he has my all right now anyone with the public key can only lock the data so if i am sending some data and he receives it he can he can't open it with the public key now the question arises i understand that hacker cannot open this but so does my server he also has my public key he doesn't have the private key right to unlock this data how will he read the data now this brings to another part how will i solve that problem so since i have a set of public and private key this server also has his set of public and private key i have mentioned it in you so this is a different set of public and private key which is of the server now this server will also send across his public key all right now i have the server's public key even the hacker has it let's say the hacker also got a hang of this public key because server sent it across the network now what happened my me and server have each other's public key right if i have to send some data let's suppose i am sending some data username or password or something i will encrypt this data using the server's public key i will lock this data this lock or encryption will be on public key of the server and i will send this across because the server only has the private key which can unlock this data so only server will be able to read this data got it if the server wants to send some data if this guy wants to send some data he will use my public key the public key that i shared in the starting to lock it this lock is mine now once this data is, is received by me i can use my private key to unlock this data this guy this hacker guy has no clue what is going on because he only has public keys he can only lock the data he doesn't have the private keys which are required to decrypt the data so that is how using encryption and using public and private keys i am able to establish a secure connection between myself and server but like i mentioned in the starting this encryption is not just limited to ssh it is it has taken over the world everywhere i use encryption these days even in the websites in the applications like whatsapp also in bitcoin 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 is just a piece of code right if i get a hang on bitcoin then my bitcoin is lost so bitcoin exchanges uses encryption methods to send data now i guess in a short video i was able to explain to you what is ssh and how it uses encryption to create a secure connection now i have a very cool thing for you if you subscribe my channel and press on that bell icon we will establish a very secure connection 
and if I send any video, it will reach directly to you. How cool is that, right? Thanks a lot and keep watching.